Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Lenovo X1 Carbon Generation 10. This is one of these executive level laptops, as I like to call them, which are very thin and light and relatively powerful as well. And this is a long line of very popular laptops. And we're going to take a look at this latest iteration in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, the price point on this one starts at around $1,500 or so and goes up from there based on the configuration options that you choose. The big selling point of these X1 Carbons for as long as they've been around for is how lightweight they are. It's only 2.48 pounds or 1.12 kilograms. And for a laptop of this size, it is extremely lightweight to the point that it surprises you when you pick it up even 10 generations later. So it's the, I think the key selling point here. Now inside this new one, we've got an i7-1260P processor. This is the new chip from Intel. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. It is dual channel memory for the best performance, but it is soldered on, you can't replace it. It does have a 512 gigabyte PCI Express 4.0 NVMe SSD inside that you can swap out if you need to later. And all in, as you'll see in a few minutes, it performs well based on its configuration. These all have a 14 inch display and there are a number of different display options available. The one that we have here, I think, is the entry-level display, which is a 1920 by 1200 IPS anti-glare touchscreen. It gets up to about 400 nits of brightness, so it looks pretty nice. And as you can see here, even though it doesn't have a shiny surface on it, you can use it as a touch display. And it will go flat to a desk as well, so you do have some ability to touch the screen, even though it doesn't fold into a tablet like their yoga line does. And the display has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so it's a little taller than a standard 1080p display might be. And this is kind of a standard thing now we're seeing across the industry. And having that extra vertical room, I think, is better for document editing and that sort of thing. Great keyboard on this, as with all ThinkPads. You've got that familiar ThinkPad feel here. The travel of the keys, in other words, how far they push down, is a little more shallow than it is on other ThinkPads that are larger, but the travel here is still very, very good for a thin and light laptop. The keyboard, of course, is backlit. You've got your tracking nub here, which has been on ThinkPad since the beginning, and you can use these buttons above the trackpad to click, but you also have a click pad down here, which has been redesigned for this generation. It is a glass trackpad, and you, of course, can click on the trackpad directly to interact with the computer. It's got Atmos speakers on board. They sound great, good separation, uh, very crisp and clear, but not a lot of bass. So they are good for doing your conferences, but you probably want to connect up a pair of headphones if you are going to listen to music on it. On the left-hand side here, we've got a bunch of ports worth looking at. Two Thunderbolt 4 ports here. These are both full service ports, so either one of these can be used for power. And then of course you can attach data devices and output displays through this. If you are looking to play games while you're sitting at your desk, you can also attach an external GPU or other Thunderbolt boxes if you want to do that. You got a USB 3 port here, a full-size one for plugging in full-size USB-A devices. You also have an HDMI output here that'll do 4K 60. On the other side, we've got our headphone jack along with another USB 3 port, and you've got a Kensington lock slot next to that USB port. One thing this is lacking, though, is an SD card reader, so you'll have to carry around one if you want to download something off of a camera. Now, there is a bump at the top of the display here, and that's to accommodate a higher resolution webcam. This is now running at 1080p. It actually looks pretty good, I think, for a built-in webcam on a thin and light laptop, so you might look noticeably better to your friends and coworkers on Zoom calls. Like other Lenovo's, you've got a physical shutter here to block the lens, so you don't have to put tape in front of your fancy laptop's camera here, so you do have that option. This, though, does not support face recognition for logging in, at least on this model, but it does have a fingerprint reader built into the power switch 
for a biometric login option. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, we're getting about eight to nine hours of useful battery life on this one, doing basic tasks with reasonable screen brightness. That's not as much as I think a lot of people were expecting out of this new Intel processor. And I'm seeing a lot of discussion online from reviewers, but also from customers who were expecting more out of this new Intel chip. And I suspect that over time, things are going to get optimized on the software side to take advantage of some of the power efficiencies that are provided in the new Intel architecture. But right now, I'm just not seeing much of a battery performance gain here over the prior generation of the X1 Carbon here. But you do get some great performance out of this one. We'll start off here with some basic web browsing. And as we uh, click around the NASA homepage here, you can see just how quickly everything renders in. And this is, of course, what I would expect out of a 12th generation i7 processor. So I think all the work that this machine is designed to do, I think it will accomplish quite well. And media consumption is fine on this device as well. This is a 1080p 60 video I'm playing back from my YouTube channel. We did get a couple of drop frames when I first loaded the page up, but after that it smooths right out. One thing to keep in mind though when you have a 16 by 10 laptop is that you will get some letterboxing at the top and bottom because most videos you encounter are at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and this display is a little taller than the video, but that's par for the course with any 16 by 10 display. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 251. That puts this machine right on par with another Lenovo device we looked at running with the same processor. And you will note that we did get a much higher score than what we got out of the prior generation device. And these new Intel chips are pretty good for basic video editing. I've got a 4K 60 video here loaded up. And what I can do is drop in a simple transition here. And you'll see this renders pretty much out in real time without any lag or slowdown. And I can very easily replace it with another simple one here and see what impact that might have on things. So we'll just zoom back out here and there you go. It's pretty quick. But when you get into the more advanced stuff, like things that have to be rendered a little bit more, like, I don't know, let's do the uh, warp effect here. Uh, this one will eat up the uh, processor a little more heavily here. And as you can see, it's not able to generate that in real time like it did with the simpler ones. So if you have a more involved video editing project with all sorts of fancy effects going on, you're going to want a laptop with a GPU built in or connect an external GPU to one of its Thunderbolt ports. Now in the past, you really couldn't run recent games on one of these business laptops, but now you can with a pretty decent frame rate. What you're watching here is Doom Eternal, and this is running at low settings at the native display resolution of 1920 by 1200, and we're getting between 30 and 40 frames per second with this game. We also ran Red Dead Redemption 2, which is a very demanding game. This also at the native resolution at lowest settings, and we were getting around 30 frames per second. This one might do a little better going down to a 720p resolution. And we also ran Fortnite at the native display resolution here with medium settings. And here we got between 35 and 50 frames per second, depending on what was going on in the game. And although this will not rival a gaming laptop, all of these games are very playable. So if gaming is a secondary function that you want to take with you on the road, you can get it done on this laptop in addition to some of your work. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,495. I was expecting a little more on this test because the Yoga 9i with the same processor performed a lot better than this one. In fact, the prior generation performed a little better graphically than this new one did as well. And I think two things are at work here. One is graphic driver optimization. The other is cooling because if you look on the bottom here, you don't have a very big air intake although it does take in additional air from around the keys, but I just don't think it's enough air that it can move with the type of volume you would need for consistent gameplay performance, and that's really showing itself on the benchmark. On the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade of 85.7%. 97% is passing, but this is really designed as a thin and lightweight work laptop, and it does the work tasks quite well. And the fan noise on this is certainly audible, but it's not obnoxiously loud or high-pitched. And I bet that was part of the calculus here in trying to balance the thermals on this machine. Now, we always like to run Linux on these machines to see how other operating systems work. Unfortunately, at the time I'm recording this video, the latest version of Ubuntu had some hardware detection issues. So I was able to get it to boot, 
but the Wi-Fi and audio were not detected. I couldn't change the screen brightness. I couldn't right click on the trackpad, at least with a double tap on the pad here. So there were some issues that I think they've got to work out. I think they will though, because the prior generation of this laptop could be pre-configured with either Fedora or Ubuntu. So that's something that I think is going to happen on this one in the near future, if the past is any indication. But right now, uh, Windows only for this one, at least at the time I'm recording this video. So there are some issues here, I think, with this new Intel technology, especially related to battery life. So if you're on the Generation 9 X1 Carbon right now, this new one is not much of an upgrade. It looks about the same, it gets about the same level of battery life, and under load it performs about the same, although it does do a little better on Office apps and web browsing, although I don't know if you'll be able to perceive much of a difference between the two generations in those areas. But overall, it is a solid business laptop, just like the other generations of this laptop were. And if you have an older machine and you're looking for an upgrade, uh, the X1 Carbons have always been nice, and this one is no exception. And I'm hoping that we'll see some efficiency improvements as Intel figures out how to get things tuned with their new Alder Lake chipset. And I would imagine there's some work that has to be done with Microsoft and with Windows software developers to get all of it to work the way everyone is expecting it to. So stay tuned on this one. I think there will be more to come, but overall a nice business laptop here if you are looking for something thin and light. That is gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.